Hey everyone, this video is going to look at fluid mechanics. This is our third dot point for the critical question, how do biomechanical principles influence movement? Our syllabus for fluid mechanics asks you to learn about flotation and centre of buoyancy, as well as fluid resistance. Uh, you'll learn two for this dot point, asks you to apply principles of fluid mechanics to enhance performance through participation in practical workshops, and also to describe how principles of fluid mechanics have influenced changes in movement and performance. Uh, so for example, uh, technique modifications, uh, changes to clothing or suits or equipment or apparatus. Now when it comes to flotation and the center of buoyancy, for an object to float in water it must be less dense, uh, that is mass per unit of volume, uh, than the water it displaces uh, or causes to move by being in the water, i.e. They, uh, they need to weigh less than the water that they move. Uh, so when you think of this, think of uh, a person getting into a full bathtub, a whole bunch of water is going to overflow from that bathtub. They need to weigh less than that water in order for them to float. If they weigh more, they will sink. Now gravity seeks to push the displaced water back down uh, while acting on the person or the object. So you have gravity pushing on the water and on the person in the water. If the force on the displaced water is greater than the force on the object, then the water will create a buoyant force that will push the object upwards against gravity until the, the force on the person and the force on the water becomes the same, and then that's where the person will remain. This is known as the point of equilibrium. Now the center of buoyancy is the center point of the mass below the water and is the point through which the buoyant force acts. Now in order for the object to not rotate, the buoyant force must pass through the center of mass. Uh, if not, the object will rotate until they do pass through each other, uh, i.e. one end will sink and the other end will rise in order to get that alignment. Uh, flotation and center of buoyancy relate to performance because the higher an object floats in the water, the less resistance the water will create to its movement. Uh, for example, a swimmer who has less body in the water has less resistance against their movement and will move faster from the same force than a swimmer who is um, further under the water. So the further you sink in the water, the slower you're going to be in your movement or the less, more resistance you're going to have to your movement. Now fluid resistance refers to the forces a fluid places on a moving object in the opposite direction to the movement. Uh, it's also going to be known as drag. So there's two main sources of drag. One is pressure or form drag and the other one is friction. So pressure or form drag is when the pressure at the front of the object increases because the object's uh, trying to move that air and so it's going to increase the pressure. Uh, then a decrease in pressure at the rear of the uh, object which causes turbulence. Uh, and so it's important when it comes to performance uh, that if you're trying to go really, really fast, you're going to try and streamline so that you're doing causing less change in air pressure at the front and less change in air pressure at the back. Uh, however, if you're in a sport like skydiving in this picture, uh, you can see here that you actually want to increase your drag uh, in your, and increase your turbulence, increase your front uh, so that you're getting more pressure resistance and also your pressure resistance that comes in your parachute. Friction on the other hand is the fr friction that is between the fluid particles moving past the object and the surface of the object. Uh, so for example, uh, we often use swim caps, goggles or swimsuits in order to reduce friction uh, because they're smoother and so the, uh, the water or the air is going, to just, is going to have less friction and less drag caused by the friction as it moves through the fluid. Now, how the principles of fluid mechanics have influenced changes in movement and performance? Uh, the Speedo's LZR razor suit, for example, uh, which uh, trapped air, making the swimmer more buoyant, lifting them higher in the water so that they had less drag from the water and increased their speed and reducing their times in events. Uh, surfboards are also now made of polythyrene or polyurethane uh, rather than wood, which allows it to be higher up and for them to move faster and change direction more easily. Uh, change in technique is something like the Magnus effect. So the Magnus effect refers to the use of spin on a ball and the resultant changes in force that cause the ball to move in the air. Uh, basically, as the ball spins, as you can see in the image here, uh, it catches particles that then increase the friction on one side of the ball, causing it to move in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's gonna move in the direction of the spin uh, and that's gonna allow the ball to curve through the air, which is advantageous for both uh, cricket, 
uh, and for football and for any other sports where you're kicking or throwing a ball and you want it to move, uh, even if you're hitting a ball like tennis or golf. Oh, my God.